Well, guess what? It is time for email. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> All, All right, right, let's get them. Let's go. Right, go. Here's our first question from Eva. I have always believed Romans 14, 5 through 6, when it came to observing the, observing the Sabbath on Sunday and Christmas and Easter holidays were allowed because we are not under the Jewish laws or observances. However, I have several Christian friends who will not celebrate Christmas or Easter because of some of the pagan influences. I've always maintained these days as joyous days because Christ was born, even though technically it was sometime in September, and God fulfilled his promise. Am I going to hell because I have a Christmas tree in my house? People keep asking us, am I going to hell? God isn't going to send you to hell because of how you observe Christmas. Whether you have a Christmas tree, there's an awful lot of paganism associated with our holidays. Easter uh, was a holiday for Astarte, uh, pagan goddess. And um, the Christmas tree and all that stuff came out of the uh, uh, Teutonic people in Germany. It's not something that uh, associates with the Bible, but who cares? I mean, it, it, the Apostle Paul said one person celebrates uh, one day and another another day. God's not going to send you to hell on account of that. It's the question, what's in your heart? God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. It has to do with the condition of your heart, condition of your mind, the condition of, of, of the love in your heart, not some dietary rule or some day you celebrate. It just isn't the thing. And one wants to do it, Paul said in Romans, and one has one day that he thinks is sick, another thinks another day. You know, God accepts them all, all right? Right. All right. Samuel says, Dear Pat, I have committed some really bad sexual sins. I've repented, but because I have depression, I can't feel forgiven. This happened a long time ago. What do you suggest? Uh, I suggest that you get hold of the Bible and read it very, very carefully in the New Testament and see what it says about forgiveness. Uh, if we confess our sins, read First John, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Now, that's what the Bible says. So take the Bible, accept it, and then begin to forgive yourself. I don't know what you did. I mean, in today's world, how bad can any sex sin be? I mean, you look at the stuff that goes on. I mean, it's so, okay, you did whatever you think you did. All right, God will forgive it. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Okay? Amen. Tracy says, I know we are supposed to tithe 10% every week, but does God punish us if we don't tithe the full 10% or skip a week or two? A church member said that God took away her job because she decided not to tithe for a week. Since she told me this, I have anxiety. Frankly so. You know, what kind of a monster do you think we serve? <laughs> the Bible says God is love, L-O-V-E. God is love, and he that dwells in love dwells in God and God in him. Not did you give 10% like he's some Scrooge with a whip. Come on. And you miss the day on tithing? I mean, who ever heard of such nonsense? I mean, who teaches that in churches? It's just not biblical. We give unto the Lord as uh, the Lord blesses us and out of the abundance of our heart. And the Bible says God loves a cheerful giver. So we give cheerfully. And, the, you know, how much? I mean, maybe you give every quarter or maybe you give once a year. Or maybe you give at the end of the year for taxes. I mean, whatever it is. I mean, you know, God, every week I'll just go to hell. I mean, that, that's just nonsense. All right, what else? <laughs> Tracy writes, I want to get closer to God. The Bible states, if you seek, you will find him. I have been saved for many years, but I don't seem to be getting closer to God. If I attend church, pray, and join a Bible study, I do have a relationship with the Lord. I feel like I'm talking to the wall a lot during prayer time, though. What do you suggest? What does Jesus say? He said, the kingdom of God is uh, within you. Uh, God is like the air. I mean, he's everywhere. Uh, his presence is with us. And uh, he's, if you have accepted Jesus, Jesus lives in you and the Father lives in you. And so I don't feel him. Well, 
the only reason you don't feel God is because there's somehow there's something secret hidden in your life that you're not surrendering. That you're holding something back. I have suggested over and over again, take a day or two, get your Bible, go off, write down a list of all the things you think that you are doing or have done that offended God. Put them all down on a piece of paper and then say, Lord, I confess every one of these in the name of Jesus and I ask your forgiveness. I receive your forgiveness. Then take that piece of paper and put a match to it and burn it up and say, all right, now I'm going to live for the Lord. All right, last question. Joanne says, I am learning more and more about the Illuminati. Pat, is it true? Learning what I've learned about it, I see the signs everywhere. It scares the heck out of me and I find myself not being able to even watch TV. What are your thoughts? All right. Uh, back before the French Revolution, uh, there were a group of people <clears throat> who had picked up some Egyptian theology, and they thought they were the illumined ones. They had a revelation of God, and there was an illuminated Freemasonry people in the Freemasons who were into that Illuminati. Mm -hmm. The Illuminati wanted to destroy private property, wanted to destroy marriage, uh, wanted to destroy capitalism, and they, they, of course, wanted to destroy government, and they wanted to destroy the church. Uh, that was 1780, or let's say. All right, this is 2000 and however many, and they, they're not part of our situation today. Some of the thoughts went through to the French Revolution. Some of it went on through to the, the communist system, the idea of destroying people, killing people. But, hey, why should you be worried about what happened in 1790? I mean, that's a long time ago. <laughs> so that, that doesn't play today, so don't worry about it.